So today I'll be sharing um, building terminal app, apps with cursors. So I, for me, I've always seen um, those old school looking interfaces on terminals. And then I have always wondered like, how did they build it? And then I, I don't know, somehow when reading somewhere and, and I chance upon this thing called end cursors and, and which like suddenly answered my question to, uh, to, to this, and answered my question on how, how they build these interfaces. So uh, today I'll, I'm just gonna go a very basic uh, introduction and then uh, how, how can we build cursors with Ruby and then also a walkthrough of a demo app that I built, which is actually a like a, a app to navigate file systems. It's like my own computer's file system. Yeah, so let me, uh, I'm gonna change my slides. Uh, give me a moment, where is my slides? Okay. Uh, and then share. Uh, okay, I'm gonna share my screen because later got the demo. So, uh, okay, I think I'll just go with this if y'all can, can see it properly. So my talk today, again, will be talking mainly about this cursors uh, library. So the outline is, uh, for this talk will be what is cursors firstly and then the Ruby binding uh, for for cursors because cursors is a library written in C so if you want to use it in Ruby we, we need some sort of like connection and then also a, then a demo and a code walkthrough so uh, first of all what is cursors cursors is actually a library created uh, a while back to allow programmers to build text user interfaces. So now it's like graphical user interfaces, right? GUI. But the, the, back in the days is uh, TUI. So it's text user interfaces. And then, and then the good thing about cursors is that you, you write it, you write the text user interface, and then it can run on, um, most terminal types. So back in the days, like from my from my research, uh, digging through a bit of history, back in the days where uh, people are still using terminals a lot, and then in the market there are a lot, a lot of types of terminals, and then there's competition. Basically, there's competition. Not unlike today. Actually, today there's only a, a few main winners, right? On on shell or terminal types. So so today, uh, so then this is uh, like a big thing where you write a interface, you write a, a text user interface and then it can uh, be like used in most, most terminal types. And then, and then it was put together, actually it was first, uh, I would, okay, this one, I think I write wrong. The first, so there are many types of cursors, but this one specifically, uh, that it was created in 1980 by University of California at Berkeley um, was built, was really like pushed out to support this game called Rook, a screen-oriented dungeon game. So on the right, you can see it's really like made of text, although there are some lines, but mainly SD characters. So also considered text. So Historically, there are actually many versions of cursors because like people build, build and pop and build and pop, right? And then like try to come up with better and better ones. And then where you have big companies trying to uh, create their own cursors and stuff. So only I do recently that, okay, maybe not recently, like maybe a few years back or 10 years back or something, that N cursors became the official standard cursors for Linux. So this is, uh, from what I can remember, is pretty recent. Yep. So, uh, so basically, it's a very small library that lets you build uh, text user interfaces in terminals. So in Ruby, actually, 
Curses was shipped as part of Ruby in the past up to Ruby 2.1. So, so um, this is beyond me. So I'm because when I started, it's already way past 2.1, Ruby 2.1. But from what I can understand is that like it was shipped then together, and that time uh, was about the time that Ruby gems came out. So, so instead of shipping cursors as part of like Ruby itself, the I forgot the person's name, but basically one of the Ruby uh, devs, they moved up moved cursors out into a separate gem, and then from from then on, cursors is like go as it goes a separate way from the major Ruby releases. So, so which means that today, uh, if, you are, you still, if you're using Ruby 2.1, you probably still have cursors inside your Ruby. But then if after that, you have to install the gem um, to, to use cursors. So it's, it kind of moved out. But it's still inside the Ruby standard library docs. So, so now I'm gonna go through some basics of like how cursors work the 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 top flow and how can you build one and some of the most basic commands that you can find in the Ruby standard library. The uh, cursors gem. Okay. So uh for cursors, the first thing is actually the init screen and the closing of a screen. So the idea of cursors is that uh there's always one screen that is called the standard screen. So when you init the screen, right, it actually initialize that standard screen, which actually takes up your whole whole terminal, uh, whole terminal breadth, length and length and breadth, or uh, width and height. Yeah. So that is the init screen. So whenever you want to, because it's inside the terminal, right? So you have to call close screen for to reset the terminal back to the normal state, which is actually like having the cursor the, the cursor in the left bottom part of the terminal. That is like the original state now. So if you don't do that, then your your um your terminal is still inside your cursor's like the screen kind of state. So you should always call close when you want to stop the app and return the terminal back to normal state and then call it need to like initialize the screen so of course then i state said the i mentioned the standard screen object right so in ruby is oop so definitely it's an object so the screen is definitely an object so to to get the object reference to the object you can call cursors.stdsrc which is a just a short form short form for standard screen. And then when you want to build your app, like uh, I'm sure you will need to know like how how wide is the app or how how tall is the screen, right? So you can call cursors.columns to get the number of uh, columns in the terminal screen that actually started this app, which is the width. And then the lines will be the height. Okay, so the next thing is talking about colors. So the colors is not supported in all terminal types, but I believe all all the recent or all, all the more modern ones will all have supported colors. So so in order to have colors, you know, actually you must initialize this colors thing, which then you call cursors dot start color at some point after you init your screen. So when you call start color, then you can start initializing some pairs, uh, some color pairs, uh, which then you can reference it uh, after that. So in here, I actually initialized two pairs of colors for, for just demo sake. So there's one primary and primary set of color and one secondary set of color. So because it's a text based, right? So it's all it's only foreground and background. Foreground is like where the text when you have text, then you'll be highlighted in that color. Then background is just like if there's no text, it will not be highlighted in that color. So here I I initial initialize 
like pair one and pair two, and then the color is just opposite, cyan, black, black cyan. And then now that we have initialized some pairs, actually then we have to set the the color, the color pairs to the screen itself. So here I set standard screen, and then you there's this attribute set method, and then you reference the color pair there. So cursors dot color pair one will be the what we initialize under cursors dot init pair one. So then now my standard screen, the color scheme sort of color scheme is actually foreground is cyan where the text is and then background is black color so this is colors using colors in cursors and then the next part is then now that we initialize the screen and then we also set up the colors uh, attributes then now now is the part where actually the ui comes out which is actually drawing of the drawing something on the screen for the user to see so drawing on the screen because it's text based right so there's only two two main things first is to set the position of your cursor so then another thing is to add the string like from the point of the cursor onwards so in this example i've i write set post set post SETPOS is actually set position. I set it right in the middle of the screen and then I type hello world from the middle of the screen onwards. So of course it's a bit off center, right? Because if I really want to be centered, then my column needs to be like minus half of hello world that, that string length. But this is just an example that kind of print it from the center of the screen onwards. So in this example, if you're gonna uh, see the terminal you will see the hello world in the middle of the screen where everything else is black and then the hello world is in cyan cyan background highlighted in cyan so the so this is drawing on the screen but then then the next most important part is understanding the the life cycle of how cursors draw so when you do set position add string add add, add then change position and add things, change position, add things, right? Then you start draw everything out, right? But it will not appear on the terminal screen. What will, after you draw everything, it's only when you call refresh, then every, then you will, then you will like uh, draw everything out and it will display everything out. So the cycle is always, uh, the general cycle that I think, uh, what I can gather is the best, uh, way to do is actually you always clear the screen and then you draw everything and then you call refresh and then you would appear so from what i read is that in the past um doing this is more efficient because if you keep drawing then you will like real time update the screen right and then it's not so uh, efficient for the computers in the past now so so then they have this idea of uh, only when you call refresh, then everything will be drawn, drawn out. So the last part is, uh, so now we know how to draw, we know how to set colors, we know how to initialize screen. Then what about like whether you can support multiple sort of smaller screens? So in cursors, they also have this, uh, also have this idea of windows or this concept of windows where you can have a screen and you have multiple windows and then you can choose to uh, display one window or change one window basically it's more OOP window style lah. it's like our OS you have a lot of brown, uh, a lot of like apps where you have each one window speed and you can be more dynamic so basically it's the same same thing uh, in cursors and the idea of windows is works actually almost similar it's exactly the same as a standard screen. Just that you have, instead of calling init screen, on top of that, you still need to do cursors window dot new. So when you initialize a window, you can set how wide you want the window to be or how tall you want the window to be. And then what is the X and Y coordinates where you want the window to uh, initialize at on with reference to your standard screen. 
And then you can also set a color scheme. And then the drawing part is still also the same. You call, you call clear on it. Then you do all your drawing. Then you call refresh to display it. So this is up to you here is just some basics of, uh, of cursors and how to actually build, how to display something on the app. So, so now I'm going to show you guys a demo of what I built. Uh, so, it will be, oh, sorry, it's cursed. So this is the app. So this is example of the, the app that I built. So like I said, it's a file directory system. So I just have a title here. And then uh, I have a Ruby. This is the tell, tells me which directory I'm in. And then I can uh, kind of uh, traverse up, up. Yeah, so basically this is, this is the, oh no, I have so many doc files. So this is what, what I have. Lah. Uh, okay, I think I've lost. Yeah, yeah. So, so from here you can see, uh, that I, uh, okay, you probably cannot tell, but then I can share with you. And later I will have the code walkthrough, then it will make it more, uh, it will make it clearer as to what I'm saying now. So, this is actually one window, and then this is another window, and then this is another window, and then this last one is another window. So I have four windows here. And yeah, so this is the basic uh, sections of the app. So so when I change or uh, when I change directory using this window, right? So when I change directory, then I will update this window. So generally I never update this one and never update the last one because like, they were, were not changed. So this is an example of a of a terminal app we built with cursors. Cur uh, yeah, cursors. So uh, I'm gonna go through the code gen quickly. Uh, uh, here, okay. So so it's actually just one file. Uh, yeah, if you. Yeah, I just put it all into one file because it's a very small app. So like you can, if you can see that uh, this, the, the app is actually here. Oh wait, let me put it bigger. So this is the main uh, application class for my, uh, for my app. And then it's just like this. I will start a new app and this is my own, my own uh, Ruby object. And then I'll just call start and then I call stop. And then that's how the entire app runs. So, so when I start a new app application, then I call new is initialized, right? So I will start the screen. I will start the screen, uh, the standard screen. Then I'll initialize all the colors. I have three, three color pairs here, one for text, one for header, and one for navbar. And then I also do some basic config. So this is just make the cursor disappear, invisible. And then I just initialize the screen. Uh, oh, I just create initialize a instance variable uh, to, this, to the standard screen. And then I just set the color scheme for the standard screen, which is um, cyan foreground and color back, black background. Okay, so after I initialize the screen, right, actually the next thing is to start the app. So when I start the app, the first thing I do actually is to initialize all the four windows that I have. So here uh, is initializing uh, windows, the function to initialize windows. And then actually just now I said that I have four windows, right? Header, PWD, the directory structure and the navigation. So 
you can see that actually there's a x y coordinate and the height and width like uh and then the color colors color pair color scheme for that window so then i have a set of five for every window i have here and then i create a new window so this window is actually my my own uh window class uh, this is actually my own window class, which is a wrapper over the cursor's window class. Now. It's just for, for me to add some, some methods for me to make it easier to manage. For example, when I want to close it, definitely have to run, run all this in sequence. So yeah, so actually I'm just wrapping the curse, cursor's window and to, uh, to create, create one, create windows. So here, after I initialize all the windows ready, then the next part is I have a loop here, which this loop will keep drawing the window and over and over again. So, uh, so let's look at the draw windows part. So now, just now I initialize all the windows, right? But I didn't draw anything at all. So now, the good thing about uh, windows is that actually inside the windows itself, the x and y coordinate goes back to zero with reference to the just from the inside the window only. So it's easy for 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 you to uh, to know where to draw the thing, draw your stuff. So like this is the header right just now. Uh, I I mentioned so this is the header. I just draw this and then uh and then I draw the PWD window and then I draw the navigation is the last one so this one is a bit like flip over but then this is the main part where the directory uh, window is so basically I just go through the whole directory entry and print line by line out okay so now I draw the window already and then here this line actually puts a like a stop block the navigation window. So basically the navigation window is listening for a key press. And then this is where uh, I detect what are the different key presses to do what, uh, what I want to do, right? So when you press Q, it will quit the app. And then there's uh, actually a take care of resizing of the screen and then you need to redraw everything based on the size of your screen again. And then if you press up and down, actually it just moves the highlighted part up and down. And then um, and then new line is actually press enter. So actually my app also supports like you can enter the folder by pressing enter. Yeah, okay. So sort of pun, but okay. You can press basically you can go to the dot dot and you press enter, it will go to the next. Um, so go to the previous direct a uh, parent directory. So then, cause uh, right and left is also let is also let me go in or go up the directory. Yep. So um, so this is where it it's uh, uh detects all the inputs. So once uh input comes in, it will do whatever it needs to do, and then it comes back into the loop, and then basically do what it, what it needs to do means it sets all the states. And then you draw the window again, and then you block blocks on the waiting for keyboard input again. So when this loop is broken, so here Q, when you press the users press Q, and it break, and it causes a break, and breaks the loop, and actually this method ends, and then the app just stops after that. Nine, and then when it stops. I'll just close all the window and then I just close the screen. Basically that's it. So like a proper tear down, proper tear down of the application. So yeah, this is uh, the demo plus the code walkthrough. So I believe that actually I only touched like the tip of the iceberg because when I was, when I was reading uh, I could get something working, but when I was reading the documentation, there was still some stuff that I didn't really under understand. So, but I think that this is enough for anybody to build a basic user interface uh, using cur curses. 
yep and yeah that's all for my sharing today oh right uh, actually i there's something that i'm supposed to show basically i wanted to show like what are the what are the softwares that builds uh, using courses oh okay okay it's not here uh, basically if you just wikipedia you find um there's this client called our email client called alpine client uh it's a terminal based uh, uh terminal based email client which is pretty cool and then i i saw another one is actually a a mixer or a music mixer i think which is also uh built with cursors so actually there's a lot of very interesting things but it's probably very old school lah, that is built with cursors so i thought that was like really really interesting yeah okay then now this marks the real end of my talk <laughs> okay uh oh i shouldn't have stopped sharing anybody have any questions let me share back uh, yeah. Uh, no, but that was a good presentation. Thanks, King. Welcome. Uh, yeah, I, anybody else have any questions? Uh, no questions, uh, but um, it was a nice one. I was already thinking about a chat application using the terminal. So uh, while you are writing this one, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it will be fun. You can just start and press under. You know, connecting to some API. So also, yeah. you can, uh, if you are some application configuration, everything can be done instead of UI. So whoever more working mm. with Linux machines, which I do, will be easier to configure your app. For example, now we do for many applications. So mm. we can create products which can configure other applications through text-based. Mm. Usually, usually anything now we have, we have UI to check box configures. So yeah, it's, mm. it's very nice to know that we can create applications on text-based UI application. So it's a mm. new Yeah, new I was thinking think, yeah. like in the past chat chat apps or like chatting systems are okay, that is probably before my time. By the time I learned programming, like that era yeah. is already over. But I can imagine like in the past probably people chat on you can easily build an app on terminal like that for people to chat with each other. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I think there will be a lot of very interesting use cases. Okay, and then uh, if nobody have any questions, um, let me just see. Wait on. Can you can you see the Ruby screen slides? Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, that's that's all I have today. Like, it was a very interesting ex uh, exercise for me too. So yeah, this is the part about jobs. If anybody have any uh, looking for jobs or or have any jobs that you that you know are available available 